One of America's favorite television stars, Tim Allen, has recently found himself in a pot of boiling hot water. This comes after word leaked that Pamela Anderson claimed in her upcoming autobiography, Love Pamela, that the former actor of the uber popular TV series Home Improvement flashed her during her first day on set as the Tool Time Girl. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Tim has, of course, outright denied these claims, stating that the incident never happened. But with footage of Tim lightheartedly flashing Patricia Richardson on the set of a home improvement from years ago, just recently being leaked, Tim might have a bigger problem on his hands than he thinks he does. I should note that Patricia said in the past that Tim was fully dressed under that kilt, though. Tim was originally born in Denver, Colorado, where he was raised alongside five siblings and his father, Gerald, who worked as a real estate agent in the city. In 1955, Gerald and his wife Martha bought a square style house on Marion Street in an area of town known as Denver's Country Club. First built in 1910, Tim Allen's childhood address boasted 2,509 square feet alongside four beds and three baths. Tim would spend the next 10 or so years living here, but then in the mid 60s, tragedy struck when his father died in a random traffic accident. Two years later, Tim's mother would remarry and move her children to live in Michigan. Over the next few decades, Tim's childhood home would swap hands a few times until it came under the ownership of Diane and David Marquardt. They bought the house in the mid 90s and then built an addition onto the original structure. A real estate broker representing the couple once told the Denver Post about this turn of the century home. David was a lighting designer, so you've got wonderful lighting throughout the house, especially in the garden. After living in this home for 10 years, the couple decided to move on to Seattle to live closer to their grown children. With their real estate agent having taken some online classes that promoted the idea of curiosity as being a good marketing tool, she took advantage of this home's history by promoting its former ties to Tim Allen and offering anyone willing to stop by for a visit a DVD of his stand-up comedy. Back in 2006, I guess that was a pretty novel idea and it ended up working out pretty well. The home sold for just over $1 million. Following his own departure from Denver, Colorado in the late 60s, Tim found himself gravitating towards theater in high school. He then studied communications at Western Michigan University, earning himself a bachelor's degree. In 1975, he got his first taste in comedy by appearing on stage at a Detroit nightclub following a dare from friends. As it turns out, Tim had a real talent for making people laugh. But shortly after he decided to pursue comedy as a career, he was arrested with almost one and a half pounds of cocaine at an airport in 1978, and he was charged with drug trafficking. Following two years spent in prison, Tim would have to start all over again and build his reputation back up during the 80s. Then in 1991, he finally had his big break when he was cast as the lead in Home Improvement. For those who grew up in the 90s, Home Improvement was a comedy mainstay, right up there with Seinfeld, Frasier, and later on Friends. It also boasted a memorable set that reminded a whole bunch of us of our own middle class upbringing. That infamous Taylor family abode was built with the intent to mimic the inside of executive producer Matt Williams' own home in California. And while the interior isn't necessarily meant to represent any one particular design style, production designer David Sakharov wound up discovering most of the props you see inside the household from a combination of flea markets as well as the Disney prop house. David says that the production was looking for tasteful, not decorated, and a few yin and yang touches that were thrown in for good measure to reflect Tim and his television wife, Jill's competing personalities. In other words, model cars, automobile posters, and Detroit Lions memorabilia clashed head to head against a Michigan opera mug, cloth grocery bags, and fresh flowers. By the time it was all said and done, home improvement stayed on the air for eight years with a total of 204 half-hour episodes. 
It might never have been any critic's fave sitcom, but it sure made Tim a rich man. In fact, the rumor is that he turned down a $50 million payday to reprise the series for one last season. Instead, he took all that money he made throughout the 90s and bought himself a new home in Los Angeles. Hot on the heels of home improvement coming to an end, Tim Allen bought himself a brand new home in LA. Having added to his home improvement paychecks with big time salaries from films like The Santa Claus and Toy Story, Tim had no problem dropping $2.15 million on a property that's said to boast nearly 6,000 square feet on the inside while including three bedrooms and four bathrooms. Located behind a darkly colored wrought iron fence, Tim's longtime home was originally built in 1990, and the property also features other amenities like a sparkling pool, an entertainment patio, a guest house, and green lawns. You might think that someone who made a name for himself on a TV show called Home Improvement might be more open to sharing the inside of their home with the wider world at large, but sadly that's not the case. And images of the interior of this residence are non-existent. My best guess is that Tim's always been someone who's valued his privacy, which no doubt makes him even more frustrated considering the recent allegations swirling around about him. While Tim Allen might have never shown off the interior of his original LA home, he did eventually pull back the curtain on the inside of his second one. Back in 2012, Tim splashed $1.4 million in a gorgeous rustic residence located just off of Mulholland Drive in the Hollywood Hills. Situated on about one third of an acre, the extensive exterior of this property includes a bevy of pine trees and gorgeous canyon views. Built in 1963, the inside of this 2,604 square foot ranch style abode features a spacious floor plan with a family room, formal living room, and a chef's kitchen, all of which blend into one another seamlessly and offer up enough space to comfortably hold a small crowd. Speaking of that kitchen, it's been outfitted with a massive wraparound stone island that's wide enough to seat up to 10 people at once and still have enough room for a fireplace not to mention those top of the line Viking appliances. Also in quintessential tool time fashion, the house boasts upgraded rock accents and beautiful Vermont pine flooring all throughout its three bedrooms and two and a half baths. The property's primary suite even offers an oversized spa and a giant steam shower with enough room for two, giving its owners the ultimate taste of rest and relaxation. Meanwhile, a series of French doors lead out back to an open deck where you'll discover an alfresco dining area, a fire pits, and an outdoor shower as well. Just around the corner from there is a small rock wall and a hedged fence, which to me begs a question. Did Tim's neighbors ever pull a Wilson on him? After owning this home for a little over three years, Tim decided to list it in 2015 for $1.95 million. It wouldn't stay on the market for long and Tim ultimately accepted a deal that would see him paid only slightly less than he was looking for at $1.75 million. Since then, Tim has retired to his original Los Angeles home, but with his name on the tip of everyone's tongue right now, he might have to consider moving out of LA altogether in the very near future. Hopefully not, but we'll just have to wait and see how this story involving Pamela Anderson continues to develop. For now though, that'll bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching. Before you head out, consider answering the following question. Taking into account the history of 90s era sitcoms, which family home was always your favorite to visit each week? That's a hard pick for me. I'd have to think about it, but Tell me which television show you think featured the coziest family setup in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. If you'd like to check out a few more celebrity abodes, then be sure to check for our looks into the homes of Allison Hannigan, Jean Smart, or Miley Cyrus. My name's Kara. Follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye.